Hello again everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. Tonight I'm going to freestyle. I hate reading scripted material because it's so robotic and rehearsed. So when I stumble and stutter, feel free to point and laugh. I'm not going to lie, this video could be a game changer, but I'm going to let you decide. The Mandela Effect topic I'm going to discuss is the vibrancy of Venus. Recently, I've heard the Emmy community talking about the bright ass star in the sky, and science has said it is Venus. I'm going to challenge that with actual video and images taken by myself. I am also going to discuss some very historical evidence that is going to back up my extraordinary claim. In addition to all of this, I may have captured the elusive Black Knight satellite. Again, I'm going to let you decide. What could be more extraordinary than claiming I have a picture of the Black Knight satellite? Stick around and you'll find out. What you're seeing is video that has been captured between October 31st and January of 2017. I started to notice these odd objects in the sky and of course the bright star so I wanted to get a closer look. The images and video are all taken with the Nikon P900 and are anywhere between October and November. As the video is lapsing through time, you can see that the star or planet is getting closer and closer. Now, I did map Venus. Venus is only supposed to be visible between September of 2016 and February of 2017. So we will know for sure by March if this is actually Venus or if this is another object. Also, while I was researching Venus, I learned that after 2300 hours mean time, which would be 11 p.m., the star or planet is no longer supposed to be visible in the sky. Most of these videos were taken between the hours of 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. Hello again, everyone. The first two images I'm going to share with you is going to be of what I think might be the Black Knight satellite. Uh, this is a very distorted image of Venus, and for whatever reason, the camera wasn't wanting to focus in on the light source, and I didn't realize this was even into in the image until I was back here going through each of the pictures that I took, and I saw this blue speck. So I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see. Ooh, that was a little fast. So obviously this is very far away and the camera I'm using can only zoom so far. The object does appear to have the shape of the Black Knight satellite and the object is moving because I just so happened to catch a second picture with the object um, because I did take a few pictures pretty rapidly. However, these were the only two images that this object showed up in. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this one too. And you can see um, this looks like the object has slightly turned, so it, it might be flipping through space as it's uh, orbiting something. Not quite sure what that satellite's doing. I just know that it was discovered uh, a very long time ago. I think by Nikola Tesla, if I can recall correctly. This image that I'm showing you here is an image of an actual star as close in as I could get to it and of course not distorted. So this is what an actual star looks like in the sky. This is an image of what we're referring to as Venus. And the reason why I'm showing you this image is because this has two light blotches that are due to reflection. And I want to notate these two pictures to you, the star and Venus, so that way you can also see a difference like what I see. What I'm going to do in almost every one of these pictures is go to the edit and I'm going to change the contrast so that 
you can see what I want to point out to you. Now this is the original picture and I'm going to hit enhance which changes the contrast and I'm going to blow that up. You're going to see these little circles right here. They're relatively the same size as our light blotch and these would indicate that these circles in my mind are a reflection of that object and not anything else. So it's very important that I point that out to you because the images I'm going to show you and the claims that I'm going to make are pretty extraordinary. So the first thing that we need to um, recognize Venus by is its alignment with Mars apparently. And it just so happens that I do have an image that contains both what we're calling Venus and Mars. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit edit on this video or image. This is what I get for not pre-recording. Uh, this right here obviously is Venus, that big bright thing, and then way down here in the corner is um, Mars. So let's take a look here. I'm going to brighten this contrast way up so you can see. And then I'm going to zoom us in. Oh, wow. And way down here at the corner, that is Mars. Now, you may have noticed this little guy off to the left. I'm so bad with right and left directions. So you might have noticed this guy over here off to the left of Venus, and this is a moon. It is a rocky object, and I do have a, a photo of that as well, so we're going to take a look. But I did want to show you that this planet or object is aligned with Mars, and Venus is apparently supposed to be aligned with Mars as well. Here again we see Venus and off to the side we see this lighter blotch and this lighter blotch is a little too small to be the reflection from this brighter object but what we're going to do is hit edit. We are going to adjust the contrast and brighten that up so that you can see that there is actually a solid object here and that that is not a light reflection. Now here's the trippy part. Venus doesn't have any moons. Here's another image of Venus and you can again see the same um, light blotch we'll say off to the left and if you look up you'll actually see a few more light blotches but again we're going to edit and change the contrast and you already see they start to become more visible now this time there are three moon or objects and again Venus does not have a single moon. This picture was taken on a different night, either, I think it's about 10 days or nights before or after. But again, you can see the three moons. And I think this picture was actually about 10 days after because this is where the moon starts to become more visible. I think this moon down here to the left is the closest moon to our visibility. This picture is where it just starts to get creepy.
In this picture, one moon is definitely apparent right here. Um, it does look like there's another moon or two, possibly three, but for this one we have to go through a few different um, color filters, I think it was. And of course I can never remember which one it was. Okay, here it is. And notice one starts to come up here. This is the main one. And this was the most recent picture I took with Venus. And this picture seems to show four separate moons. I'm going to brighten up the contrast. And you'll see one, two, three, and four. So these moons, they, that's wicked, they um, obviously are moving. It is some sort of celestial system. Um, this actually gives a pretty good view of all four moons right there. I like that. Uh, color filter. That one does too. But you can clearly see as I'm going through the color filters there is four other objects that appear to be rotating around what we are calling Venus. Now here's the extraordinary claim. Because Venus does not have any moons. So let's say for a moment we look at historical text. The Lost Book of Inki is a tale from the Sumerian times which is written by Inki, the creator god himself. And Inki tells the Sumerians about Earth's history. And one of the things that Inki tells us is way a long time ago, before we were ever even a sparkle in our daddy's eye, we were called a planet uh, named Tiamat. Tiamat had uh, several moons that was within its orbit, and so did Nibiru. Tiamat was placed uh, somewhere where the... Uh, asteroid belt would be near Mars, or past Mars, I guess I should say. Now, supposedly, the legend goes that uh, Nibiru had come into the solar system, which it loops around close to our sun every 3,600 years. And when it looped around, a few of the moons from Nibiru had slammed into... Tiamat and a few of her moons which created the asteroid belt and then Nibiru had uh, stolen some of the moons and debris that was left over in its net according to the Sumerian text and from there we were kind of bounced off course and we ended up in the rotation that we have today. Um, our planet healed, and when the Anunnaki or the gods arrived, they called this um, Ki, K-I. And that is actually Inki's name is, you know, like ruler, commander of the earth and sea. In Lil, is his brother and you'll also hear a lot about him in in stories like the epic of gilgamesh and and other ones like that too but in this story it would indicate what we're seeing here it is in fact not venus but possibly nibiru or planet x or whatever you want to call it 
I know some people call it wormwood or whatever. Some other people, um, like the Hopi religion, uh, they have their own race of aliens that came here and, and created the people and so on. So it's really prevalent in a lot of religions. Um, in fact, Christianity, believe it or not, came from the Sumerians, um, which, you know, later turned into Babylonia and Mesopotamia. So a lot of Christians, if they read the Lost Book of Inki, they would probably get chills because it is so... It's just amazing. It really is just amazing. It not only explains what the Bible was talking about, but it actually gives more detail and answers those questions that just never make sense with Christianity. Sorry, guys. Don't mean to offend anyone. I do. I absolutely love religion. I took a bunch of courses in it, so I probably spent years and years, uh, two, two and a half years worth of classes, um, specifically learning about different religions and mythology. And the one that really stuck with me was the Sumerian text, because this is the closest thing that we actually have to uh, the Word of God, if that's what we should call it. But again, guys, thanks for watching my video. I hope you're as amazed at finding these four additional little guys floating around what science is asking us to refer to as Venus. I do have one more picture for you though before I let you go and that is the actual moon. So finally the moon was close enough. That's not it. This is it. <laughs> finally the moon was close enough and I was able to get a pretty good zoomed in picture of it and what I'm going to do here is just zoom in a little bit further so that you guys can see the thing is a thing. And this is what I think is, is one of the closest satellites that are orbiting what we are referring to as Venus currently. And just to show you the difference, I'm going to go ahead and change the contrast on this too so that you can see. As I was um, doing this originally, changing the contrast on this photo, uh, I think I was probably most amazed by this one because I feel like I'm just looking at a another world right here. And it's clear as day. There's an object there. It's not a light blotch. It's not a, a glare or a, whatever you want to call it. Now, could it be something completely different? Absolutely. Um, not... I love astronomy, but I'm definitely, definitely not a physicist or an astronomer or, you know, even one of those damn star reading psychics. Although I would like to learn that. The only things I do know are what I can verify, what I can map, and what I can say is this star, Venus, has moons. Venus does not have moons. We are looking at one of those moons right now. As this celestial group of bodies gets closer, and I'm going to release more video, and of course I have a lot of other crazy videos um, that I can post too, some really crazy stuff up in the sky. So you guys feel free to ask any questions or you know give me your input sorry I made this video so long but thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful evening good night